We live in a time of civilizational collapse, or as I've stated many times, a time where God is destroying old worlds and he's building new ones. And because all of what has been familiar and seemingly good to us is crumbling and slipping away, Christians are scrambling for solutions. It's a good impulse, it's a good impulse, but uh, these solutions after solutions that are offered uh, are trying to figure out how to stop all this madness. Some are better than others, some are terrible, some have bits of truth to them, some have lots of truth to them, but we are generally all missing the mark. We tend to gravitate toward fixing symptoms rather than causes. I'll give you an example. Among some conservative Christians, it's become fashionable to bash classical liberalism, to trash democratic reforms, uh, uh, democratic Republican forms of government, as if the form of government is the reason for the collapse. As Alexander Hamilton once said to Thomas Jefferson, your people, sir, is a great beast. The masses are brutish and stupid and sinful, and so we need to return to monarchy. Monarchies will save us. They envision something like Plato's philosopher king. A philosopher king will get us out of this mess. I can't count the number of times I've seen radically traditionalist Christians share memes depicting Christ during his passion and the Jewish mob demanding Barabbas's release. The overlaying text says something like, democracy always chooses Barabbas. So let's think about this for a second. Was Barabbas chosen under a democratic form of government? Was Jesus crucified under a democratic republic? No. Barabbas was released and Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate, an official of the Roman Empire, under the th authority of an emperor, a king, a monarch. And Pilate gave in to the demands of the crowd. The crowd wasn't invested with the authority to determine what would happen. Pilate was. Pilate could have uh, refused the crowd. He could have put the crowd to the sword instead of the Christ. And that's not what he chose to do. Our creed doesn't say Jesus was crucified under a democratic republic. It says Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate. So, my point is, monarchs can be beasts too. Kingdoms can be beasts too. Empires can be just as brutish, stupid, and sinful as the masses. And sometimes even more so, monarchies can be a great beast. In John's apocalypse, we see the rise of a great beast, and that beast wasn't democracy. That beast was Emperor Nero. So let me let you in on the reality. Forms of government don't matter. Monarchies, oligarchies, democracies, the rule of one, the rule of few, the rule of many, can all rule in a way that benefits the common good, or they can rule in a way which benefits them themselves. The form is irrelevant. They can all be good and they can all be bad. And here's the other reality. All forms of government are monarchies. They are all monarchies. In all of these earthly forms, the rule of one, the rule of few, the rule of many, they are all under one king. And that king is Jesus. They are all under his authority. They are all under his sovereignty. Now they may be bending their knee to him in obedience or they may be rebelling against him, but he is still their king nonetheless. They rule as lesser authorities in the kingdom of God, where all authority in heaven and earth has already been given to him. So we already have our philosopher king ruling and reigning, and all lesser magistrates, no matter what their form, are under this king. So we already live in a kingdom. The forms of the administration of the lesser magistrates of that kingdom basically don't matter. John Adams, uh, he was right when he said, our, co our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. I think it's just a great statement on uh, just limited forms of government in general. You're not going to have a limited form of government with lawless people. What happens with lawless people is you get 
brutal dictators and tyrants. And that's not necessarily a moral evil in itself. It's something necessary to control the lawless mobs. It's just like the laws of physics in the political universe. And so the solution is not merely to reorganize the forms of earthly governments, though we are permitted to do so. The solution is for all to bend the knee to the king who already reigns, for all people, rulers and subjects to repent and believe and keep the decrees of the king who already rules, whose kingdom already exists. Reorganized forms of government apart from obedience to the king of kings is as useful as reorganizing the deck chairs on the Titanic. It is like looking to the law for salvation rather than the lawgiver. Our salvation doesn't come from these forms of administration, but from him who rules and reigns already. And this reminds us of our need to confess. 